and welcome to the Wellness Wednesday webinar series brought to you by the Family and Community Health Sciences Department of Rutgers Cooperative Extension. Before we get started with the presentation on filling your day with fruits and veggies, we'd like to ask you a few questions about your demographics. These questions are used to report to the USDA to ensure that we are reaching a diverse population. Also, at the end of the presentation, you'll be asked a few questions about what you thought of the webinar. Please make sure to hit finish and exit when you are complete. Thanks so much for your participation. So it gives me great pleasure today to introduce our presenter, Chris Sellers. Chris is the Family and Community Health Sciences Educator of Cape May County for Rutgers Cooperative Extension, where she presents wellness, nutrition, and fitness information to the Cape May County community. She has extensive experience creating healthy changes around food environments for communities and her work in the area of policy system and environmental change has led her to seek a master's degree in public, health, uh, public policy, pardon me. Chris enjoys working with uh, collaborative partners to create healthy opportunities in the community and creating a healthy living environment. As a member of the FCHS team, she is working with colleagues to study best practices around policy changes that will create sustainability in the areas of nutrition equality. Chris has worked in, the fitness, uh, in fitness for over 23 years and nutrition and wellness for over 10 years. She is also a trained tobacco specialist with experience in counseling and smoking cessation. Without further ado, I'm gonna hand things off to Chris. Thanks, Alex. And Alex is one of my partners that I work with at creating uh, some healthy policy changes. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Welcome, everyone. Uh, the sun is shining today, so we have a, a nice day. I hope you can get out and get some sunshine and a walk um, when the presentation is finished. Um, as um, Alex mentioned, these are the logistics. You can put your questions in the Q&A and in the chat, you can put um, any other information. Um, before we get started with the presentation, I wanted to quickly review the Cooperative Extension structure for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Rutgers Cooperative Extension is a partnership between the Board of County Commissioners, Rutgers the State University of New Jersey, and USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Uh, we have faculty and or staff in 20 of the 21 New Jersey counties, and we are composed of three departments, including agriculture and natural resources, 4-H Youth Development, and Family and Community Health Sciences, or FCHS, which is um, our department. FCHS provides outreach in New Jersey and beyond on topics related to nutrition, chronic disease prevention, food safety, and overall wellness. We hope that you will uh, visit our website for nutrition and wellness related resources and follow us on social media. And there's information on how to do that uh, right there at the bottom of the page. So um, today's um, topic is filling your day with fruits and vegetables. And in an effort to try to make things a little bit different than the normal eat more fruits and vegetables, I've pulled in a couple of other um, informative type things to um, keep it interesting and hopefully give you some new information that you might not already know. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to um, have three objectives. We're going to examine the benefits of adding more fruits and vegetables to your day for a healthy eating pattern. Um, we're going to learn the advantages of eating seasonal produce, and we'll discover tips for adding more fruits and vegetables to your day, because I know it's always, um, I get that question a lot, it's always a challenge, well, how can I do it? I want to do it, but where and how can I do it? So we'll talk a little bit about that at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> so to start the conversation, it's really important to note that the, the reason for this topic is that Americans fall really short of the recommended daily intake of vegetables and fruit. The 2025 dietary guidelines that just were released concluded that about 90% of Americans don't get the recommended requirements for vegetables and about 80% don't meet the fruit recommendations. So we're not in a room together. We can't look around at each other, but, you know, given if there, you know, was a hundred people on this, on this, on this call right now, you know, 90% of you wouldn't be getting what you need for uh, the recommendation requirements for vegetables and 80% for fruit. So that's significant. So that's why it's worth having this conversation. Since so many people fall short of the recommended, uh, recommended amounts, it is important to think of creative ways to add those fruits and vegetables into your diet. 
This may be a slow process, so it might mean adding a little bit at a time, maybe adding one vet, taking one of your normal snacks out that might be, you know, something sweet or something salty and replacing that once a week with a vegetable snack and then continuing to do that at, you know, progressively adding to that down, down the road. But we're going to talk more about how to add fruits and vegetables to your day as the presentation progresses. So fruits and vegetables contain phytochemicals. And when we're in schools and we ask kids if they think phytochemicals are good or bad, usually they say, oh, they're chemicals, they're bad. But actually phytochemicals are good. They're what give the beautiful colors. And you can see on the picture here at the bottom of the screen, that is from the summer. They're all vegetables that I got out of my home garden and they have a, all different colors. Um, so the beautiful colors that provide vitamins and minerals and help fight chronic diseases like cancer and heart disease come from the phy phytochemicals. Um, they're also, um, vegetables and fruits are also really nutrient dense. Uh, they're low in calories. So unlike high caloric foods, um, fruits and vegetables supply our body with what we need with fewer calories to help us maintain a healthy weight. And then vegetables and fruit are really high in fiber. Um, and that's one of the areas we're going to cover today. Americans don't get enough fiber. And we're also going to talk about um, potassium and calcium because that's, that are two other areas that we don't get enough of in the American diet. So fiber keeps everything really moving through us properly. That's why it's important. And it helps to prevent disease when everything's moving the way it's supposed to be moving. Sorry. Um, they all, um, and again, like I said, they also contain potassium and calcium and they're all areas we're falling short on. So hopefully after this discussion, it'll motivate you to uh, eat some more fruits and veggies for their benefits. So as you can see from this, um, you know, I mentioned in the last slide, the fiber benefit and it, we get a lot of fiber from fruits and vegetables, but I also want to point out that fiber is really an important part of the diet. It keep, like I said, it keeps things moving, but when we get bloated and constipated, it makes us feel really sluggish. And that might make us feel like just sitting around versus getting up and moving and exercising. So it could prevent us from, you know, getting that physical activity that we need every day. So that sends us into a whole nother unhealthy factor. So getting good fiber has the benefit of making us want to move, but it also moves everything inside of our body. Eating the right amount of fiber is really critical to being regular and whole foods like fruits and vegetables, as well as whole grains, will contribute to your overall fiber intake. So like I said, Americans fall very short of meeting the recommendation for fiber each day. The United States um, Department of Agriculture, the USDA DA, recommends fiber intake of 25 grams for women, and that's up to the age of 50. And for men up to the age of 50, it's 38 grams, as you can see on the screen there. For women over 50, you should have 21 grams of fiber per day, and men require 30 grams over 50. On average, Americans are getting only about 10 to 15 grams per day. So that, again, is putting us well below the average of what we needed. So as you can see, we get too few fruits and vegetables, and in turn, we're getting um, too little fiber. So um, increasing your fiber with fruits and vegetables is a really good way to try to go. So as some examples of um, high fiber foods and whole, um, or whole grains, like I said, nuts, legumes, and vegetables and fruit. Some um, fruits have more fiber than others. So you can check that out and kind of get, you know, find a list that gives that information. But for instance, berries have a higher fiber in them than say apples. So, you know, you can, kind of monitor and figure out which ones are better for you, which ones you like. Um, and we're going to talk about mixing it up a little bit later in the conversation. But overall, adding more fruits and vegetables to your day will really contribute to greater fiber intake and a better functioning body, which is what we're all in desire of, right? All right. So in addition to the dietary guidelines statements that America's fall short on fiber intake, we also do get the recommended amount of potassium in our diet. So some of you might have been on a call um, or a Zoom presentation where somebody, a nutrition educator is talking about the um, nutrition facts label. And you will notice that at the bottom now they've added potassium and that is because we're not getting enough of it. So they're trying to encourage us to keep mindful of that. So that's one of the reasons I plug this in. Instead of going through the whole, you know, everybody knows that fruits and vegetables help to reduce cancer. They help with chronic diseases like high blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease. But, you know, these are some areas to kind of zone in on. So that's why I took this avenue with this presentation. 
Um, the recommended levels of potassium are 4,700 milligrams, and getting this amount should be achieved by increasing fruits and vegetable consumption. So according to an article in Harvard um, Health published um, from Harvard Medical School, you should consult a phys physician to get a prescription for potassium supplements. Don't just take potassium supplements. Potassium su supplements that are taken incorrectly uh, could easily cause a high uh, blood potassium level that can be dangerous. So you want to make sure, you know, to get them from fruits and vegetables, get the potassium from fruits and vegetables and other high, um, high potassium foods. But, you know, it, before you do take a supplement for this, you should check with a doctor. If you, um, if you're, you know, it's true with all supplements. If you're going to take a supplement, if you have a really well-balanced diet that does contain a lot of fruits and vegetables, that could cut down the cost of having to take supplements because then you're getting them naturally. So um, that's another area that you can, you know, look at fruits and vegetables and say, oh, okay, these are just doing me good in the pocketbook too, I guess, um, because they're helping you to have to not take as many supplements. Potassium is an important, um, is really important to the body for many reasons. And the dietary guidelines suggest increasing consumption based on potassium's ability to prevent vascular disease. Um, potassium has been shown to reduce the incidence of, of stroke among people with great consumption of potassium, and it's also been shown to lower blood pressure. Um, potassium likewise helps to prevent kidney stones and helps the body to properly absorb calcium. Uh, it also regulates heartbeat. Um, it also helps cells, muscles, and nerves function normally, and it assists with metabolizing carbohydrates properly. So it does a lot of good things. Fruits and vegetables that can contain more than 250 milligrams per half cup serving are dates, beets, beet greens, which are shown here in the picture, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, oranges, apricots, avocados, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, and cantaloupe. Um, and I know that you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about adding things into your diet, how to add the fruits and vegetables in. I'm going to send you a few recipes after the discussion to, you know, encourage you to do that. But um, you might want to check with friends and relatives and, you know, seek how they're also finding creative ways to add fruits and vegetables into their day. All right. Another area um, that fruits and vegetables can provide is calcium. So calcium is another area that we're lacking in our diets, and it's estimated that about about a third of us don't meet the recommendations for calcium. Calcium is important for teeth and bone health. It helps us with secretion of hormones and enzymes in the body, and it supports nerve signaling in the body and assists with muscle uh, contraction. And you probably are wondering, okay, this lady says she's gonna talk about fruits and vegetables in, in your diet, and she's talking about calcium. Um, but calcium is a dairy product, yes, but some vegetables and fruits can also contribute to your calcium intake. So especially if you're not, um, you know, if you're not, if you're vegan and you're not consuming dairy products, eating some of the fruits and vegetables that are higher in calcium could help to compensate for not um, using regular dairy, dairy products. So um, vegetables and fruit, I'm sorry, um, especially if you don't consume dairy products, that's what I said, okay. So green, sorry, green leafy vegetables like collard greens, um, spinach, kale, turnip greens, mustard green, beet greens, and bok choy all have calcium in them. So those green leafy vegetables do contain um, calcium. Others that contain calcium are okra, acorn and butternut squash, uh, sweet potatoes, and, um, they have those have them the acorn the okra and the um, sweet potatoes the squashes they have them not as much as the leafy greens but they do contain some calcium and then other items like brussels sprouts figs and oranges have calcium too so you can see they're all different colors um, and there's a, an array of them so you can pick some out and try to get a little bit more calcium in your diet with fruits and vegetables Okay, so I um, noted at the beginning that we were going to talk about how you could benefit from having a healthy eating pattern. And now that we know how fruits um, and vegetables benefit our body and keep it, um, let's talk about a little bit about how a healthy eating pattern would look and the results that you could have for you and your family if you eat a healthy eating pattern. When you hear a nutrition educator or a medical prof professional suggest a healthy eating pattern, they're often suggesting a variety of foods that are nutrient dense and low in sugar, fat, and sodium. Um, fruits and vegetables fit the description perfectly of a healthy eating pattern, and they should be included throughout the day. 
right? We've all heard make half your plate um, fruits and vegetables at every meal. While it's good to eat a salad, um, having other vegetables is important as well. A variety of fruits and vegetables contributes to a healthy eating pattern because the various colors uh, provide you with a range of benefits. So all those different colors, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, do something different. So while again, eating a salad's great, you have maybe some onion, tomato, lettuce in there, you wanna get a big variety every day. When you think about your fruit and vegetable consumption, ask yourself if you're eating from just one color group. So for instance, do you eat mostly red vegetables? Um, also ask yourself if you're eating just one type of fruit, like just apples or just grapes. And if you are, you should really consider changing it up a little bit. Um, adding a variety of colors and types of vegetables and fruits um, are really essential for having a healthy eating pattern, that variety in type and the variety in color. Colorful produce has been shown to reduce the likelihood of some cancers, assist in preventing heart disease and stroke, lowering blood pressure uh, risk, while, all the while helping maintain a healthy body weight. Um, because they're low in calories and high in fiber, we, as we stated before, it'll help us to maintain that healthy weight. So now that everyone knows that a variety of types and a variety of colors is important, let's look at the color groups or pro of the produce and talk about what those colors do for us. So um, we have the red group. The red group is really good for fighting heart disease and cancers, and they also help fight infection. The orange and yellow group are good for vision. And if you think about, like, think about these things, I always get interested in this, but if you slice a carrot, you know, down, the inside of the carrot kind of looks like your eye. And, <clears throat> excuse me, orange and yellow ve vegetables and fruits are good for your vision. So it's just a fun thing that I like to point out. But, um, you know, they have different traits. They all are good for you, but they all have things that they help with too. So orange and yellow are good for vision, immunity, and lower risk of some cancers. Green vegetables and fruits are good for strong bones. Um, remember we said that the green leafy vegetables have the calcium. They're good for cancer and inflammatory disease reduction. Purple and blue fruits and vegetables may lower the risk of cancers. They promote memory and healthy aging. Uh, white, brown, and tan lower the risk of some cancers and they lower the cholesterol. So good reasons to eat all of those and, and keep it moving and changing. This is a chart, um, I'll get a, into it a little bit more, but taking it, um, take a look at it. It's, a partial chart and you can see down at the bottom that it was taken from myplate.gov um, backslash eat dash healthy slash fruits. At the end of the presentation, um, we're going to send out some information and this link will be on there. So if you want to go in and look at the chart in its entirety, you can do that and it'll give you some ideas. So the reason I put it on here is because I know that a lot of times people get confused about how much they should be eating of fruits as well as vegetables. So this chart is an example of how many fruits a person should consume and can be found and, and can be found at the link, like I said. These amounts are appropriate for individuals who get less than 30 minutes per day of moderate physical activity beyond normal daily activities. Those who are more physically active can maybe consume a little bit more while staying within the calorie needs. So remember, the amount you should consume to maintain a healthy weight will vary, and that's going to vary dependent on your age, your gender, and your activity level. Um, I'm also going to send in the follow-up email a calculator from my plate that you can plug in your age, your gender, and your activity level, and it'll give you your personal information for how many calories you need and, and so on, so that you can use that as a gauge for this chart. This is another... Excuse me one minute. Another thing that I wanted to point out because I, I have people ask me this question too is, you know, what is a serving size, a daily serving size? So what does that look like? So shown here are examples of what would count as a one cup serving size of fruit. Again, it's from the MyPlate site. This is a, just a few of them and they will have a few more ex options and examples if you go to that. Um, and they'll also offer to you what half cup serving sizes are. So again, dependent on how much you're supposed to eat for your age, your gender, and your activity level, it might be a cup, it might be a half a cup, but they'll give you those measurements on there and some examples. I do wanna point out that up in the top corner there that these are all cup for one cup serving, but 
that gives you a half a cup of dried fruit is the equivalent to one a one cup serving. So to kind of give an example of what that means is dried fruit is a smaller portion of fruit. It's a half cup serving. So a, a half a cup um, a half cup serving of raisins is only that small little box that you get, the 1.5 ounces, and that's because the food is dried. The pro the drying process shrinks the fruit down considerably. So that little tiny box could be equivalent to maybe a bunch of grapes, you know, depending on how much was put in there. So that's why the dried fruit measurement is, yes, it's a cup worth, but it's only a half a cup. So I just wanted to point that out so everybody was clear on understanding that. But you can see, you know, the different sizes um, and how you eat them. The, the watermelon is a small wedge or slice about an inch thick. And then if you dice it or put it into watermelon balls, it's about a cup equals a cup. So, you know, because of the different serving ways, I tried to put that out there and show you the examples of that as well. All right, same thing with the vegetables, as was the case with the fruit. These are examples of veggie consumptions, and they're based on the amounts of, that are appropriate for individuals who get less than 30 minutes per day of moderate physical activity beyond normal daily activities. Um, they, those who are more physically active obviously could probably consume more and still stay within the calorie needs of the day. So I will send you that link as well, and that gives you an example of that. And then next we have um, an example of vegetables. So shown here are examples of what one cup of various vegetables would look like. There is a more complete list, just as with the fruit at the myplate.gov that I'll share with you after the program. Um, take a note on this one, that one cup of cooked spinach equals a cup serving, but two cups of raw spinach equals a one cup serving. So that's where it gets a little confusing, but. The difference is due to how it shrinks down when you cook it. I don't know if you've ever cooked spinach, but when you cook it down, it really, really shrinks. But when it's not cooked, you have the air in between it and it takes up less space. So you can get the, the two cup serving equals one. So that's um, mapped out again on my plate, but this is just a little bit of information to give you those ideas and how they break out. And you can see here in the top, like I was talking about the carrots, how they look like the center of your eye. Um, I, I always like to show the kids that when they were little. <laughs> get them to eat more veggies, right? All right, so also I promise is one of the objectives in the beginning was um, to talk about eating seasonal products. And eating seasonal produce can have advantages to our bodies as well. Um, it can also help our bodies, but not only our bodies, our wallet. So historically food consumption habits followed what was local and seasonal because that's all there was. So people, you know, back in the day before there was a grocery store in every corner, didn't have the opportunity to go choose where they were getting pineapples in New Jersey in January. Um, it's convenient and yes, it's great that we can do that, but it also makes it so we're not eating so locally and so seasonal. So eating seasonal can be less expensive because the produce is in season during that time period. The local aspect of fruit and veggies means that our food does not have to travel as far to get to us and it's better for the environment. Food has that is in season is going to be fresher and it's going to taste better most likely. And finally, eating seasonally provides us with the benefits of those seasonal produce options. So for instance, during the fall um, season, like as items like butternut squash, apples, and leafy greens are in season here. Um, we know that the, the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but these fruits and vegetables provide many beneficial vitamins and minerals. For instance, leafy green like kale and arugula are packed with vitamins and minerals. Uh, kale contains vitamin C, A, K, and B6, as well as magnesium and calcium. Um, copper and, uh, it also has copper and potassium in it and even some protein. Pumpkin has really made a big splash over the last few years. In the fall, um, it's being shared on social media with hashtags like pumpkin spice latte, um, pumpkin spice latte season. And while it's true that um, pumpkin spice latte may be really yummy, it does have a lot of calories and sugar in it most likely. Um, but using regular pumpkin in recipes in the fall can be really beneficial for your body. So adding actual pumpkin to dishes in the fall brings out the dish's flavor. It can be used to sweeten mus uh, muffins and to make soups. 
and many other dishes besides just pumpkin spice lattes, um, which don't actually have pumpkin in them probably. Um, there's great vitamin minerals in them like potassium, vitamin E, uh, C, and B. And I'm going to share with you after the presentation, one of the recipes I'm going to give you is for pumpkin uh, muffins. So you're welcome to go and go ahead and try those. To give you another example of um, you know, eating seasonally, January through April, most plants in New Jersey are not growing because of our weather. And that time in the early days before grocery stores, um, people would th eat things like potatoes and beets, root vegetables that they could store in root cellars. This would give them a supply of foods that would keep them you know, through the winter when things weren't growing so much. Root vegetables are hardy, and although they get a bad name sometimes because some of them are starchy vegetables, they do serve a purpose because they really help to keep us full and warm in the winter. Um, eat, eating white potatoes in moderation is fine because they're, um, they're a starchy vegetable, so you want to keep them in moderation. But other root vegetables like roasted carrots or sweet potatoes that are orange in color and provide um, a rich source of vitamin K, vitamin C, potassium, magnesium, folate, phosphorus and fiber are all a good idea. Um, and again, when you eat the beets, you know, you can see there in the upper picture that the beet greens are kind of cut off of it, but you know, you can consume the entire plant. So there's different ways to have it at different times of the um, different meals. So you can, have, you know, maybe have the beet greens for lunch. You could have the beet, the actual beet root for dinner. So there's different ways to eat that plant. As we move into spring in New Jersey, uh, leafy greens become readily available in our climate along with asparagus, mainly vegetables that are able to sustain a cold early start to the growth season are what are available. Garlic and strawberries also come into season later in the spring. Um, both garlic and strawberries contain vitamins that help us to fight congestion and help along, um, they help along, move us along in the spring when we do have congestion and they provide vitamin C. Garlic's um, an excellent source of vitamin B6. It's also a good source of magnesium, psyllium, and vitamin C. In addition, garlic is a good source of other minerals, including phosphorus, calcium, potassium, iron, and copper. Strawberries, um, which are in season here in the spring, are an excellent source of vitamin C, an antioxidant necessary for the immune system and skin health. Um, magnesium, they also have magnesium folate, uh, vitamin B9 and potassium. And if you notice the contents of many of the seasoned spring vegetables, or the, what's in in the spring, they contain vitamin C, which we know helps to fight colds and viruses. So it's kind of nature's way of helping to keep us healthy. And it, in addition, it provides lots of benefits for overall health. Then finally, in the summertime, that's when New Jersey is really plentiful with fruits and vegetables. Um, one local summer favorite is obviously watermelon. And they're mostly water, they're about 92% water. But that's really a refreshing um, way to get some hydration, right? So from some watermelon that also has nutrients. So each juicy bite has a significant level of vitamins A, B6, and C, lots of lycopene. Um, they have antioxidants and amino acids. Watermelon is an anti-inflammatory and it provides hydration in the summer weather. Tomatoes and peppers also come into season in New Jersey in the summertime. And tomatoes actually provide our bodies with lycopene. And lycopene has been shown to have many benefits, like reducing the likelihood of certain cancers. In addition, um, an article in Pe uh, Pe PubMed that had a study in there showed a decrease in UV ray absorption among subjects who had higher, in higher intakes of tomatoes um, with high levels of lycopene. So don't go eating a lot of tomatoes and skipping the sunscreen, but it does, it's interesting that that's a summer vegetable and you know that are, people call it a fruit, the USDA says it's a veggie, but um, the, it's in season and they have a way of protecting us and hydrating us during the, the summer season when we need it. So that, you know, they're kind of doing what our body needs for us. So that's why I, I put the seasonal portion in there because it's saving you money. Um, by being local, it's saving the environment by being local, and it's giving you some real tasty benefits as well. It's a good way to add them in there. Um, I grabbed this slide actually from one of my other presentations, Eating Healthy on a Budget, because people often say, you know, when you ask them about eating more fruits and vegetables or you do a survey with them, they say, you know what, they don't, I don't eat them because they're too expensive because of the cost. So I just wanted to put this out there as the way of disputing the cost of the vegetables. 
This is a breakdown of green beans um, that are canned, frozen, and fresh. So you can see the differences there. And as you see under the equation column, the price is being divided by the number of servings, which gives you the price per ounce. So the costs are comparable between the fresh, frozen, and um, canned. And if you're trying to save money, you know, you're probably going to go with the frozen or canned, which is fine. But if you're buying canned fruit, make sure it's not, um, you know, not just green beans, but if you're buying any kind of canned fruit, make sure it's not in the heavy syrup. And if you're buying um, a vegetable that's in a can, you can rinse it off or buy low sodium to make sure you're not getting a higher sodium content from them. So you can see that they're all relatively within the same range. A fresh is a little bit more but they're in the same range in the cost breakdown. And I also just wanted to point out as an FYI, because people always say to me that it is uh, more expensive to eat healthy. I did the calculations on potato chips, the same as I did here for green beans, and potato chips run 25 cents per serving compared to the 13 cents per serving of fresh green beans, which is almost half the price. So that dispels that rumor. Um, so it is not always cheaper to eat unhealthy. It might be more fun, it might taste better. Um, but if you eat fruits and vegetables and get used to them and you know, don't put a lot of sodium and, and fat on them, but try to eat them and keep going at it, then you're going to be able to eat them and enjoy them just the way you might some other foods that aren't so healthy for you. All right, so finally, we're gonna talk about little steps to add fruits and vegetables into your day that can be helpful to supply your body with all the health and nutrients that it needs. So adding extra fruits and vegetables to a, um, a soup or just having a soup-based fruits and uh, a soup-based vegetable, a vegetable-based soup, sorry, couldn't get that out, a vegetable-based soup. So right now is a good time, Sunday afternoon, get a recipe for maybe um, a butternut squash soup or a um, pumpkin soup, something, tomato soup, something that is based in a fruit, fruit or vegetable that's gonna give you a lot of flavor. It's gonna be nice and warm during the day. Um, I, what I do is I make the soup on Sunday and then I put it into um, canning jars with the lids and then I pull them out at lunchtime and it's really handy because then I just have to heat it up and it only takes a few minutes. So um, there's lots of recipes out there for that. I don't, I think that's one of the ones I'm sharing with. I don't think I'm sharing. I'm sharing a kale salad that's awesome recipe with you. But, um, you know, there's lots of recipes out there. Talk to friends, talk to relatives and, and get one and, you know, try making a nice soup to add the fruits and vegetables in that way. Um, also here shown here is crock pot meals. So you can add fruits and veggies or, you know, mostly vegetables probably into your crock pot meal and make them taste a lot better and add the fruits and vegetables that you're looking for. Topping pizzas with fruits and vegetables rather than adding meats is another way to add them. Um, putting more into your sandwiches, more fruits and, or more vegetables into your sandwiches is a great way to do it. I put fruit, I put pineapple on my pizza, which I know grosses out the people in my office, but that's okay. It's really good. I like it. So you could try things like that, you know, mixing it up a little bit, have a homemade pizza night and don't get out the processed meat. Instead, get out fruits and veggies and let the family all cook with you and add those. Um, smoothies are a good way to add extra fruits and vegetables, but I think it's always important to remember that, um, you know, the fiber that is attached to the vegetables in their natural form is what helps connect everything and move everything through our body. Some people, because it's ground up um, in a smoothie, it's hard, it kind of goes right through them because it doesn't have, that fiber is like chewed up and broken down. Um, and same with fruit juices. Fruit juices can count as one of your servings for fruit and vegetables, but um, it's always good to have that fiber attached in the whole fruit if you can. Um, let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> adding them into muffins, like I mentioned, I was going to send that recipe out, recipe out is a good way. Um, there's recipes out there where you can, instead of using oil, use applesauce or use, you know, pumpkin or something like that. That'll give a lot of flavor and that'll help you to add some fruits and vegetables to your day. If you have kids that love macaroni and cheese, I know mine did when they were little, if you can mix broccoli in that with them and get them used to eating the broccoli with the macaroni and cheese, that might help them to eventually eat it on its own um, and hopefully get an extra veggie serving in there. Also adding things like spinach or carrots to a sauce can in, uh, boost your intake. And um, you know, sometimes people, my kids don't like the chunks. I used to put carrots in there. I chop them up and they say, oh, is there carrots in here? I even put carrots in my meatballs sometimes. 
but um, sometimes the kids don't like that. So if you puree them and put them in that way, or if you cook them in the sauce and let them cook during this, you know, you're making spaghetti sauce or something, and then you take a submergent um, a blender and chop them all up, they won't even know they're in there. I have a friend that puts spinach in her spaghetti sauce all the time, and her husband always says, this is really brown. Well, because it has um, he doesn't realize that she purees in the spinach that's cooked in there with it. So, you know, just a few little sneaky ways, I guess, to get your family to eat a little bit more. Um, let's see, I did that one. Um, another way to really add more fruits and vegetables into your day that has been studied and they ask people this is if you have like a bowl of apples in the refrigerator or a bowl of grapes on the counter that are washed and ready to go, people are liable to pick at them. It's like that, you know, when you're at the counter at the checkout and they have all that stuff that you don't really need to buy, but you go ahead and buy it because the, the power of suggestion makes you want to buy it. Um, if you have those fruits and vegetables sitting out and they're either prepackaged to grab and go, or they're sitting on the counter to munch on, then you're um, much more likely to do it. And it's easy, it's convenient. So look at doing that. Um, if you're running into a convenience store to grab a snack, think ahead before you go in and plan on grabbing something from the veggie or fruit aisle versus one of the uh, salty snacks or the sugary snacks so that you're grabbing them that way. Um, adding more produce a little bit at a time. Um, I know like it's for some people diving in all the way, that's their thing, they can do it, that's fine. If you can't do that, just think at the beginning of the week, I'm going to add um, you know, more vegetables into my night I'm going to have this week, I'm going to have an extra vegetable at dinner. So just try adding in little tiny bits at a time like that. And you'll gradually get hopefully towards that um, being in that 10% that eats uh, the required amounts of fruits and vegetables in our country. This is all of my um, information where my research came from. And this is a um, link to a evaluation for me. If you would be so kind to take that, you could actually hold your phone up if you have the scanner on it and scan it and it'll pop up the evaluation on your phone. And if you don't have the scanner on your phone, that's fine. If you want to just copy and paste, Alex can put it in the chat for me. Um, if you want to copy and paste that link and go ahead in after the presentation, I'd really appreciate it. Your thoughts and comments about how the presentation went, or what you learned are always very helpful for us to kind of guide where our, our presentations go. I always, you know, like I said today, I was trying to do things a little bit differently and bring in some information you might not already have. So I hope that you found that helpful and you'll be kind enough to take that survey and, um, you know, get involved with letting us know. And if you want to release the poll as well, Alex, um, we can go ahead and do that. I'll just say, I'll kind of skip ahead a little bit here. Um, one of the things that we do find out from the polls is, again, information on what we can do better, who we're serving. It helps us to make sure that we're reaching our audience, and that is always very helpful to us. So if you would be so kind as to complete the poll that's up right now, that would be wonderful. And then finally, in conclusion and to wrap up today, um, it's important to find creative ways to add fruits and vegetables into your day so that you can be healthy and get all the wonder, wonderful benefits that they offer. Um, as a child at the dinner table, you may have been, you know, not really wanting to try new options. And I know that that's a thing that kids don't want to try new options. I know my thing was Brussels sprouts. My mom's on the call. Hi, mom. Um, she used to try to get us to eat Brussels sprouts all the time. And guess what? I'm a grown up now. I love Brussels sprouts. I happen to put them in the air fryer and they are awesome that way. Um, so give it a try. You know, maybe something that you really disliked, which was Brussels sprouts for me, um, back in the day, your palate might have matured and it might be something that you do enjoy um, having. You can see in the picture there, that's actually a picture I took. I use um, sauteed spinach because I have a gluten allergy and um, for my, my base of my meatballs now. So I eat that's how I eat it. I get a little bit more um, out of my day, a little bit of um, vitamin and mineral there from my spinach. And um, I just don't, the, the gluten-free doesn't agree with me and I can't eat other pasta. So for me, that's a good option. Um, I ask friends for new recipes. Like I said, I'm going to send some out, but ask friends for some recipes and some advice. Check things out. Um, make sure they're not high in sodium, fat, and um, sugar, but you know, try to find good ways to cook up fruits and vegetables. And try to eat local and seasonal for best cost and the nutrient benefit. And then eat a variety. Remember that variety of all the different colors out there and the vegetables that are out there. So there's all, they're very important in getting um, that range of healthy 
um, good vitamin and minerals that we need. And finally, enjoy, get out and enjoy some of those fruits and veggies. Awesome. Thank you, Chris, for sharing your Thank presentation you. with us.